Andrew Cartland, the principal of Cartland Law, and today I'm talking about business structures for company. So the company is one of the most common business structures, and today I will be talking about the company owned by a discretionary trust. Now a company will have uh, directors and they will uh, who control it from day to day, including perhaps the company uh, secretary, and they will, the company shares will be owned by some shareholders. The company itself will own and operate the business. Now I'm going to start off as to why we have our shareholders a discretionary trust. Now you can have individuals as the shareholders, and it used to be common to have um, a different class of shares for uh, different people. Um, so you'd have the husband and then the and wife would each have you know, A and B class shares and the children might have C, D, E class shares. Now it's more, more common to have just an ordinary shares held by a discretionary trust. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, um, with the discretionary trust, you get asset protection. That is to say, if you go bankrupt individually, the shares, you don't own the shares, but the trust does, and you don't have any ownership in the discretionary trust. Um, and so therefore, you can, uh, 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 you have that asset protection. Um, secondly, you have the ability to stream and, and make distributions uh, and choose where your franked dividends goes out from your family trust out to you know, the husband or the wife, or you can set up another company or other entities. And so you can send the income out, or your accountant can send the income out um, in the most beneficial manner. So besides asset protection, you want to have this income streaming. You can achieve income streaming by having different classes of shares um, and having discretion as to whether you distribute to A class and B class shares. But if you do this, uh, you won't be able to access the small business CGT concessions uh, and there are have been some anti-avoidance tax considerations with dividend access shares, um, although uh, particularly when people when they've been given to employees, um, and therefore their employment income has been replaced with purported dividends. So you can use different classes of shares. You can use dividend access shares to achieve similar outcomes, but it's it's actually a little bit more complex to think about. Um, you've got some more uh, planning to think about and you miss your asset protection. So you're going to own, have it owned by a discretionary trust. Now the, the trustee of the discretionary trust, the person behind this, um, often will be another company, but if you want to, if you want to save costs, um, if the discretionary trust is just holding something passive, such as the shares, uh, you could use an individual as the trustee. So you could have the person who is behind the, the, the company, they could be the trustee, and you will get this asset protection because if they went bankrupt, their assets, their own assets, are separated from the assets of the trust. And therefore the shares which are in the company, which are owned by the discretionary trust, will be set off and, and kept safe. Now, so a company, the advantages of a company, well, first of all, the advantage is limited liability. So if a business goes bust, which is a, an important consideration, a business risk, then what happens is that um, the assets of the people behind it are not at risk. So just say you get a large amount of debts or unexpected tax debt, then it will go to the company. The company will be limited um, uh, to its assets to pay those debts, and therefore you uh, won't lose your family home. Now, there are ways of getting past that limited liability. So, for example, if there uh, is unpaid GST, PAYG super, you could the ATO can issue a director's penalty notice to who is the director, um, and then they could be held personally liable unless they put the company into administration quickly and it doesn't. And, um, um, and assuming that all of your BAS obligations are up to date. Um, so you can get around the director penalty notices. It is something just to be careful of. So ideally, you're gonna have the, uh, your personal assets in say your 
uh, your partner's name, um, and then you'll have one person who is the at risk party who takes the slightly more risky um, uh, position of being the director and uh, perhaps the trustee of the trust, and they will. Um, it, even though there's a lower risk as being a company director and the company will absolve them with this limited liability, what happened, um, there is still some risk for a director, particularly if they have insult their own trading while insolvent. Um, if they are a director of a company that goes um, into administration, it will appear on their credit rating. So it's not, you know, uh, bulletproof. There is no, you know, there will still be some negative consequences if the business went under, but you will prevent most of the serious harm. You will save the, the, the furniture, so to speak. Uh, I, and I have seen people literally save their furniture and save their house by using a company structure. It's really important, key part of structuring, um, getting this limited liability. Another really important thing is that you get the company tax rate. Uh, the present for small businesses is gonna be 27.5%. Now, over time, uh, this is scheduled to uh, decrease. Um, and the company will pay that tax itself. And, uh, and so it's, you can not only pay that flat tax rate, you can retain the profits in there and use them back in the business. Now, uh, if you're operating through a discretionary trust, while you can distribute money out to a company, uh, it is then harder to get that money back in, can be done, it's just something that you need to pay attention to. With a company, when you're operating the business directly out of a company, it's very easy just to uh, retain those, that money in there. Most business owners I know, their primary concern for at least a number of years is to put as much money back into the business as possible. So this makes it a very easy thing to do. Uh, now, if you're on a lower marginal tax rate than a company, so just say you're starting off and you're earning 50 grand a year in profit, uh, and it looks like you're gonna continue with that new business, maybe uh, it's, uh, you're gonna actually be disadvantaged by a company and that you're gonna pay that amount of tax. Now, it should all net itself out. You get franking credits and then distribute all of your profit out through your discretionary trust to you individually. Um, but there's gonna be tax timing issues, you're gonna to have to pay the tax and then you'll get it back. So, um, or if you're just retaining the money in the company, you know, you're gonna be paying a slightly higher amount of tax. So, uh, if you're gonna be earning a lot of money, you know, you're earning more than 100, more, two, more than 200 grand uh, revenue, and particularly if you wanna keep it in the, in the business, company is a, uh, uh, essential part of the new business structuring and owning a uh, running a business through a company owned by a discretionary trust you know one of the most commonplace and uh, effective business structures so uh, another benefit is that if you have a, uh, a tech company you're, you're uh, investing in a lot of tech research uh, you can claim the research and development tax credit if you're making a profit you're going to get 15 percent of your tax back if you're making uh, losses, you can get 45% of your expenditure back. It's a really important consideration, and you can only get that through a company. So uh, that's essential. Uh, you can get income streaming um, through a company with multiple classes of shares. The default structure is company owned by a discretionary trust. So we're, you know, we've got two pieces here. And the discretionary trust is the thing that enables you to stream. Uh, if you're um, if, if your wife is earning uh, great money and, you're, and you've got uh, a small income in your own name, you're gonna to want to stream income to you, so you pay, uh, so while you're on your dividends, you pay a lower amount of tax. It's something your accountant is gonna help you decide at the end of each year. You don't need to work it out uh, uh, beforehand, but um, it's an important consideration when you're setting up a, um, a structure. Uh, income streaming multiple parties. Now, um, here we just have you know, it was one shareholder, so this is owned by a, a discretionary trust. But if I wanted to add in someone else, say I wanted to sell 50% of my shares to uh, uh, some, another party, 
So I'm just going to represent them here, who probably own it on, in a discretionary trust anyway. It's very simple. Um, I can set out different classes of shares. I can set out different rights. It's really clear uh, who owns what. Um, you know, I can add them as a director, and um, uh, and they and so it can be really clear um, what the governance of this is. And from a company, you can go from a small proprietary limited company uh, um, all the way up to some massive listed company. As you expand your government governance rules, there is a, um, uh, you know, a, a huge potential for ex expansion and con and determining. It's very easy to determine who owns what. I mean, probably going to want to pay. Uh, close attention to what the Constitution says. Um, when we set up companies, uh, we ask you questions and you can set up different classes yourself uh, and, and define what rights those classes have. Now, it's, uh, it's very easy to transfer shares to different people or transfer the whole business. You could obviously sell out at the business level or you could sell out at this level. Now, um, if you are selling your shares to someone else, you might still get the 50% capital gains tax discount on the shares. So if you have started off your business and, you, and the, the value of the shares have gone up massively, now your business is really profitable, you sell part of them off, you can, uh, if, if you've hold them for, held them for more than 12 months, you can get the CGT discount. This is a really important thing to get when you're selling a capital asset. And the uh, so you can get if you sell if you sell shares. Generally, when you're selling a whole business, the person doesn't want your shares um, because if you've got any skeletons in the closet, so to speak, you know maybe there are some uh, tax liabilities that haven't come up. You know, there's um, there is uh, you've done something negligent, or you've got someone's going to sue this company that might not have manifested itself for up to four years for an audit, uh, longer for fraud or evasion, a limited time, um, seven years for other actions. Uh, there are ways of overcoming that and, and creating some kind of indemnities, but typically people won't want to buy your shares if you're selling the whole business. They might want to buy shares if you were selling parts of it. So if you're selling the whole business, you generally sell it here. Um, so it's, it is easy to transfer if you want to leave the shares in your will. If you own them in your own name, it's easy to pass on. Um, transferring them, uh, if, you're, if they're owned in the discretionary trust, you're going to have to pay particular attention to how you transfer this over, because with the discretionary trust, part of the advantage of it is that you actually own nothing. So you're going to need to pass over the trusteeship, your pointorship, the, um, or perhaps, um, uh, pay close attention to what the trust deed says. Does it allow you to transfer uh, in some other way? So there is some complexity to that. Uh, don't do, don't use a do-it-yourself will kit. Then, um, so besides transferring um, the business over, um, if you do sell it out out of here, unfortunately, you won't get the fifty percent CGT discount. It's expressly. Uh, from Benzit for companies. So, so that's a big downside. Um, you will pay tax at 27.5% and, and you might say if you're selling for a large amount of money, um, uh, you, uh, you're going to prop, you know, it's only a few more percentage points higher um, than uh, otherwise. And it looks like the trend is generally towards a lower corporate tax rate. As far as predicting what was going to happen in the future, you know, we're, um, we're, will we get down to 25% uh, corporate tax rate or, or lower? If that's the case, you know, a company is a great, you know, uh, is going to be a great structure to use. Um, whether or not you get the 50% CGT discount won't matter so much. Now you can get the small business CGT concessions. There is you need to pay a bit more attention to to how you get them. Um, it's going to go. You, you're going to be uh, owning it through the discretionary trust here, so you're going to have to pay attention to where the distributions have come out. If um, you're going to have to look for significant individuals who who owns what percentages, particularly we have multiple people. Um, 
it's just something you need to pay attention to and tick all of the boxes. Um, they should be available, but just don't assume you automatically get them. Um, this can massively reduce your capital gains tax uh, by either another 25%, uh, another 50%, so you're only paying a quarter uh, of the gain, um, or even to zero. Now, disadvantages, there are some setup and accounting costs. You know, you're gonna have to pay about 460 odd dollars for an ASIC fee, uh, plus uh, whatever it costs to incorporate it. You know, maybe it's gonna cost you a thousand bucks all up, or we do these online for around 150 bucks, plus your ASIC fee. Um, uh, you're gonna need to pay for your um, family trust. There is more accounting costs. It's not huge if you're running a business. Um, it's not going to be a big deal, but if you've got, you know, compared to a sole trader, it's a little bit more complex. Um, there is more corporate tax and governance issues. So if, um, if I've got dollars sitting in here, I can't just pull these out and spend it myself. I'm going to have to pay attention to uh, how this is taxed. Now, maybe it gets ultimately taken out as wages or dividends. Um, or uh, some kind of loan that I repay. Uh, but if I just take my money out and I don't pay attention to it, uh, there can be negative tax consequences and can be quite very negative tax consequences. There are rules you do need to follow with corporate governance. You know, if you're trading while insolvent, um, you can become personally liable. You know, like these are not insurmountable things. They're not, you know, uh, most businesses have a company in their structure that will have a company and discretionary trust uh, in their structure. So um, this is uh, very commonplace, um, but I just need to point them out as being potential disadvantages. So a company owned by a discretionary trust, one of the most common business structures, summing up, you get the company tax rate, you can easily retain profits in there, you get asset protection, limits of liability, and um, and it's, it's common, easy to, easy to add other parties. Your accountant's gonna be really familiar with it and know, know this. Thank you very much, this is Adrian Cartland, Principal of Cartland Law.